What is going on guys, Jack here and welcome back to another episode of the Portsmouth Career Mode series. This is episode number 70 guys and we're going to start today's episode off by going into the January transfer window. And of course you know what that means, we're going to be doing a live commentary as we are now in the January transfer window. We've got a lot of fixtures in this January transfer window, I've just realised we've got three cup matches and then also three matches in the Premier League as well. So really, really busy January. We're hoping to sell some players and maybe bring a few players in as well, sorry. And we'll just hope that we can actually sign some players as well as shift on a few players that are a little bit of a dead wood in the side. And apart from that, let's just get into it and try and make some transfers happen. So we start off here by seeing that Bolton, they are not going to go back in for Tyler Blackett after I did counter off for of £5 million. So that is absolutely fine. And we do have a final scout report on this guy, Isaiah Yates. And you may be wondering, who is this guy? And basically, I've been scouting him for a while. He's a young centre-back, 20 years old, plays for Coventry. 65 overall at the age of 20. That's not bad whatsoever. And I may end up signing him. Maybe not at this moment in time, but, you know, maybe towards the end of the transfer window. I've also put in an offer for this guy, Matt Yafora, as well. He looks really, really good. He's got five-star skills, five-star weak foot, and we'll just have to wait and see in the coming days if we do get any offers accepted. He's asking for 70 grand a week. I can't do that. I honestly can't do that. I really can't afford that because I've got other players that I'm looking to sign in this window and this just this move doesn't make any sense to be honest. As much as I'd love to bring him back to the club, 70,000 a week for a player that's 78 overall at the age of 27. That is just way too much. He's being paid way too much and I don't think I'll be able to afford his high wages. So I've had a little look at the players that I can sign on pre-contract deals and there's quite a few interesting ones in here to be honest with you. One of them being Wellington Silver. I am very much interested in this guy. Maybe a little bit of a weird signing considering he's only 75 overall. But to be honest he does look like a good player and he probably would end up moving to us if I did actually put in a contract for him because I guarantee he's not a first team player at Arsenal so I will put in an offer for him and we will hope that it does get accepted I will bump that down to 35,000 I will give him crucial first team player and we'll wait and see if he does accept that so we have a game here guys against Hull City in the FA Cup round of three I'm gonna go ahead and play this match because I do feel like it's it is an important match that I do want to play and considering we're looking to go far in the FA Cup I think it would make sense to play this match and we will have a look at my lineup in a minute that I am going with. But we will select the kits there, so there we go. And the lineup that I've gone with for this match, I've gone with Matthew Ryan in goal. He starts every single one of our cup matches. And he's actually been in pretty good form when he does actually play in them. Then we've got Meekings, Lasqueles, Christie, Ben and Williams, and we've got Gardner and Chaloba in midfield. Will be a little bit of an interesting one to see how they do. We'll have to wait and see. Then we got Wallace, Wilczynski, Aarons, and a strange one up front being Remy Bacar. Going to give him a go for his Portsmouth debut. He is a young player. He's only 19, I believe. And he is a striker. He's very, very tall, very strong, and we'll have to see how he does in this match against Hull City. Jed Wallace cutting inside. He's just not got it anymore. In these higher divisions, he's just not the player that he used to be in those lower divisions. He was a really good player in League 1, in the Championship, and in League 2, of course. He was just an absolute star. But right here, we're getting attacked here. And that's a good opportunity for Hull, but that shot was really wayward. There we go. We can go on the counter-attack now. Bakar is not the fastest of players. Of course, he was one of our scout future stars, and that is a brilliant over-the-top ball. Rolando Aaron's almost got there as well. What a great through ball that was by Wilczynski. Don't let them get it into the box, whatever you do. They're trying to build it up slowly. I do believe they're playing a five at the back formation. That probably explains why they're trying to keep hold of the ball. Making sure that I don't actually create anything in these matches. And then just pouncing on me when I do make a mistake. A little bit like that really. Because I did make a little bit of a mistake there in defending that. Oh my god no. Oh my god that was way too close right there. Probably the best opportunity of the game. And he puts it wide of the post. Let's try and find a pass inside. We have done. Oh my god, that was absolutely lovely by Wilczynski. Oh, that was so unlucky. What a lovely little scoop turn that was by Wilczynski. He's so, so good in those positions. And then he has a shot, and it's a good save there, really. The goalkeeper probably should have done a little bit better with that. Maybe, of course, it on the rebound. 
So it looks like we're actually going to have to go through an FA Cup replay match against Hull City. Probably not the most ideal situation really because I would have liked to have picked up the win, especially the chances we had late on in the match. But a really good save by Alex McCarthy meant that we couldn't actually score a goal and come away and go through in the FA Cup. Which is a little bit of a shame, but I guess it doesn't really matter too much. It could have been a loss at the end of the day because they had a lot of chances, a lot of possession, and they probably could have scored from some of the chances that, that they did have. After that, we see we have a few chance offers unacceptable. One being for Michael Mann, John from Sunderland. He did score one of the goals in the draw in the last episode, I do believe it was, in the Sunderland match. They're valuing him at 19.5 million, so there's no way that I'll be able to afford that. Not this season, at least. And then we also see there Matthew Fora, which is a bit of a shame. Again, it's declined and they want more money. So I will go ahead and offer 500,000 plus Luke James. And if they accept that, we're going to have an awesome young striker on our hands. So we have four emails here. One of them being a chance offer accepted for Zellalem. So they've accepted a deal of £0 plus Tartar. This could be a bit of an interesting deal, to be honest. I don't know if I want to go ahead and accept this or not. I'm still scouting him, so I probably won't actually give him a contract just yet. And I will just wait for the most amount of time that I possibly can. So that I can get an idea of what overall he is and all of that. Didn't actually mean to do that there. But we have a chance to offer for Jordan Ibe. It's coming from Stad Rene of all clubs. And they are, they're putting in an offer of £20.5 million. There's no way I'm selling this guy, so I'm just going to reject that offer. Unless we get an astronomical offer, then I may consider selling him. But that is just way too low for a player that is so influential in our team. I'm also going to be putting in a pre-contract offer for DeAndre Yedlin, the American right-back from Tottenham Hotspur. Look at those physical stats. That is insane. 86 strength, 98 sprint speed, 98 jumping. 90s across the board in his physical attributes and even his technical attributes and also his uh, mental attributes they're still very very good so I'm gonna go ahead and offer him a contract he's only on 50 grand a week and I say only that's still quite a lot of money but I will go ahead and offer him a contract because he could be a really really good player for us next season so we have a game here against Manchester United in the Capital One Cup semi-finals guys I'm gonna go ahead and play this match because I do feel like it's quite important in this season and it's a chance for us to maybe go to a final and maybe pick up some silverware. So I will show you the team now and I'll show you the team that we actually do have. A fully strengthened side apart from the fact that we are missing Chaloba. But apart from that, Dele Ali is filling in for him. It is our strongest side that we can possibly put up with regards to player ratings. And I'm hoping that that is a good enough side right there for us to go ahead and pick up a good result in this match. And maybe a win. Maybe we can get to the final of the Capital One Cup. We'll just have to wait and see as we get into this match against Manchester United. Half time and again, we are not creating any chances in this match. Neither are Manchester United. And it's been a really, really dull and boring first half. Hopefully that can change in the second half. Dele Ali doing a lovely through ball there to Neil Morpay. Why did he stop running there? I have no idea. And it's gone out for a corner after being deflected off of shore. Right, we have a corner here. We're going to play this one short because it just seems to work so well. This corner technique works really, really well. Just crossing it into the middle like this. And then the near post. It's John Anthony Brooks who wins the header. I can't believe that that actually worked. That is a clear example of why just playing it short and then crossing it into the middle works more time than not. And it's John Anthony Brooks, our centre-back, who actually out-jumps Raphael there, beats him to the header, and he puts it into the back of the net. And that is our first goal of the episode here, and we are ahead against Manchester United. Oh my god, they've managed to get it into the middle there, and oh my god, we've conceded a goal. Way too simple, really. They just find some space in the middle, and it's Van Persie who actually taps it into the back of the net. Really, really frustrating kind of goal to concede because against the runner play, they've scored a goal there and they've leveled it up here. We've got a lot of work to do if we're going to get the momentum back on our side. You can see there, Fellaini playing it through there to Di Maria. He just passes it inside with the triple tap cross and it's poor defending and it's also poor goalkeeping at the same time. Oh my god, they've really caught us out on the break here and it's Van Persie who takes the shot. Oh no. We've conceded a goal. I think that that is it really for us. Unless we can find something to get 
to get us back into the game. We haven't created too much in the game, to be honest with you. Maybe it is a little bit deserved, but it's a little bit frustrating, isn't it? To see two goals conceded from probably preventable situations. Right there, I don't know what the right back is doing. He really should have caught him up there. And in the end, it just goes through the legs of Tom Heaton. And it's a bit of a disappointment there as they get the goal to put them into the lead. Oh dear, that's really disappointing. That really is. We've gone out of the Caps for one cup there. And in a bit of a disappointing way, it's the substitute who comes on and scores two goals. Van Persie right there scoring two goals. And really, that's kind of put the dagger in my chest. I didn't really expect that to happen. And out of nowhere, they got two goals, really. I thought after that goal from a corner, we would continue our good showings and maybe get a second goal. But really, we didn't create too many chances in the game. And in the end, I guess we did deserve to lose. And we do get knocked out of the Capsule 1 Cup in the semi-finals. So after that match, we do have a few emails here. And we'll take a little look at every single one of them before we end off the episode. And we've got a few scout reports there, which I will take a look at off camera. And apart from that, I don't really think it's not looking too promising, is it? I mean, Stephen Corker, he wants his full 60 grand a week. Which is a little bit of a shame, really, because these Premier League players that I want to go in for, I'm only going to be able to go in for one of them. And it's most likely going to actually end up being... I don't, I don't know where he is. He's obviously not here at the moment, uh, the email that I did send earlier. But that would most likely be Wellington Silver. That's his name. Most likely going to accept him, if any player, because he's actually on quite low wages. And he's a player that we probably actually need. Stephen Corker... I don't even think I need him, so I'm not actually going to go ahead and resubmit a contract offer. So once again, we have a transfer offer unacceptable for Matt Yafora. I do believe I'm pronouncing his name right. If I'm not, do let me know in the comments down below how you think I should be pronouncing it. But he does have five-star skills and five-star weak foot. Confirmation there that he does have that. Although he does have low, low work rates, which is a little bit of a shame, I guess. But uh, nevertheless, he looks like a really good young English talent. And I will go ahead and offer £1.8 million. And we'll wait and see what they do say about that. But it looks like I'm going to be after spending a lot of money if I am actually have any chance of picking this guy up. So we have a few emails here. But we do have a pre-contract offer accepted for DeAndre Yedlin. And I will leave this one to the end of the transfer window. Just so you guys can put in any suggestions that you do want. As opposed to this player. But... I am looking at possibly getting a new right back. I mean, Christie's been good, don't get me wrong. But DeAndre Yedlin, he's just a step up from that. He really is. He's got some great stats. I won't sign him now. I will continue to stall it. And then you guys can make a decision later on in the transfer window as to whether we sign this player or not. Right, so we have a game here against QPR, guys. But this game will be played in the next episode, episode 71 of the Portsmouth Career Mode series. And that is mainly because I want you guys to leave your suggestions in the comments down below. For any transfers that you do want me to make, you know, any ideas that you do have, I will be open to hearing them. I've listened to quite a lot of your suggestions so far, and hopefully later on in the transfer window, we can make those into a reality in this series. But hopefully you guys have enjoyed this episode of Career Mode, and if you have, please be sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already, as it really does help out my channel, guys, and it does show me that you are enjoying this series. But other than that, guys, I'm going to have to leave it there. And I'll see you next time for another video. Thanks for watching.